A couple of weeks ago, Scott had the opportunity to attend the Made by Google event in New York City. It was a huge opportunity for our channel, one that we are eternally grateful for. But opportunities like that take a lot of coordination and planning. So Scott and I spent many hours discussing logistics and what equipment to bring. And it was during one of these planning sessions, talking kind of casually about portable chargers, that we made a discovery that could have derailed the entire New York trip. So this week, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks for buying your own portable charger, what features to look for, how to find the right battery that fits your needs, and how to tell whether or not your battery is going to get you in trouble with the TSA. Before we can get into any type of comparison, we first have to separate the technical details from the marketing jargon. And what makes this complicated is that many companies have different names for proprietary technologies that all do very similar things. RAV Power, for example, has iSmart, which automatically figures out how much current to send to your device to minimize the amount of time it takes to recharge, but it's only available on RAV Power devices. Quick Charge, on the other hand, is a standard developed by Qualcomm that also reduces the amount of time it takes to recharge your device, but it's a standard, it's licensed, and it's available on many devices. The standard disclaimer here is that if you don't recognize the technology, do some quick research to make sure that it even works on whatever device you're trying to recharge. Physical connections are another important consideration. Probably 99% of the chargers that are out there all have USB type A because at this point it's still pretty much the universal connector type. Most will even have other connectors like micro USB or even USB type C. So take a moment to look at the charging cable for your device and make sure that you have a connection like that on whatever portable charger you're looking at. Another really important consideration is the maximum amperage that your portable charger can output. The really, really short and dirty version of this is that the maximum output amperage determines how quickly your device is gonna recharge. A one amp charging port is fine for small batteries, but something like a Galaxy Note 9 is gonna take literally all day to recharge. Two and three amp ports are more common, but you might even fee see, why, why is speaking so hard? And you might even fee, <laughs> why can't I get through this? Two and three amp ports are more common, but you might even find some five or six amp ports which are usually on bigger batteries designed to charge larger devices like laptops. Now this probably falls under the heading of obvious, but you wanna make sure you're getting a battery that has the right capacity. If you're trying to charge your phone and your battery isn't big enough, then your new charger might only get you to 10 or maybe even 30%, probably not what you wanted. Bigger physical dimensions don't always mean more capacity either. This battery is obviously bigger than this battery. But what about this one? How big a battery you need depends on what device you're trying to charge and the size of the battery in that device. Now, if you don't know how big your device's battery is, you can always head over to Google and type in something like iPhone 10 battery capacity. There's a few ways that you can express battery capacity, but you're specifically looking for a number of milliamp hours for your device. Batteries are also labeled with a capacity in milliamp hours. So to get a ballpark of how many times your new battery is going to charge your device, you can calculate the battery capacity of the charger divided by the battery capacity of the device, and then take about 65% of that number. You might be tempted to just go out and buy the biggest battery you can possibly find because, I mean, let's be real, who wants to really do maths? There's just one problem with that. These guys. Now, if you're one of our friends from across the pond and you're not planning on coming to America anytime soon, I have great news for you. You buy whatever battery you want. But if you're stateside, or you will be soon, then you're going to have to contend with the federal anti-fun police. And the only thing they hate more than four ounces of any particular liquid is anything even remotely resembling a sense of humor. Batteries that are too big. Now, there's many ways to ruin a vacation even before it starts, but getting on the wrong side of the TSA is not only one of the most frustrating ways to do it, but it's also one of the easiest. Carry the wrong battery and the TSA could confiscate your battery, not let you board your flight, or require you to obtain written permission from the airline itself to even get on the flight. According to the FAA website, the TSA will allow passengers to carry lithium ion batteries, which is basically everything at this point, in their carry-on bags as long as they are 100 watt hours or less. 
And this includes both spare batteries and devices with batteries already inside the device. Anything over 100 watt hours can be carried only with airline approval and only if they are already installed in the device. Now the astute among you will notice that the TSA uses watt hours to define capacity while most devices are labeled with milliamp hours. And this isn't entirely stupid, but it does make it difficult for consumers to navigate the policy. Most new batteries come with the watt hour rating stamped on the back as a result of this policy, so that should be the first place that you check. And really all you're looking for is just to make sure that number says under 100. If you're missing that watt hour label, you can calculate that number yourself, but it's gonna require some research and some more math. The general formula is the milliamp hour capacity of the battery times the output voltage divided by 1,000. Now, one important thing for my fellow non-mathematicians that are out there is just comparing the milliamp hour value on two different batteries isn't enough to tell you whether or not one is safe over the other one. Different batteries with different output voltages can yield different watt hour capacities over 100. But honestly, I mean, rather than deal with the TSA, if you have a battery that is either over the capacity or you're just not sure, just leave it at home and buy a new one. They're like 30 bucks on Amazon rather than have to deal with that whole headache. All right, that's gonna do it for me for this week, but hey, let's give it up for the TSA and their super easy to navigate, just totally consistent policies. They're the real heroes here. I mean, I love them, I know you guys do too. Anyway, thank you all so much for stopping by. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, don't forget, every Thursday we do a live show, 8 p.m. Eastern, where Scott and I interview interesting people from around YouTube and field questions from the audience and talk about technology. It's a good time. You should stop by and check it out, and I will see you all in the next video.